built this hardware caddy when I had a permanent workbench on the other side of my shop. But now I find that this is just more in the way than it is useful. But I do like the uh, individual portable bins that's on a French cleat. So I think what I want to do is use the same concept, take the bins, make some more, and then utilize the inside of this closet door here. This is a solid core door, and as you can see on this one, I've built a shelving unit that is loaded down, and the door does fine. So this on here, let's go. So the first thing I did was grab a bin and figure out where on the door I could place it so that I could still see inside of it. And I also took measurements of the door so that I could figure out how big or small to make the, the bins so that I could utilize as most space on the door as possible. On this small size, I was able to fit five across. For this project, I'm using nothing but scraps. I have a lot of half inch plywood cutoffs that I've been saving up for this project. And this project is mainly the bins, which is made up of a ton of repetitive small pieces. So the process kind of repeated itself where I made strips of the table saw, then took it over to the miter saw with a stop block and cut them to size. I started off by making the bottoms, which has a 45 degree angle on it. I set up a stop block at the miter saw and started cutting all of the bottoms to size. Then I repeated the process by cutting more strips to make up the side pieces. Took it back to the miter, new, new setup with the stop block and cut them to size. The side pieces have two 45 degree angle cuts on them. And I used an old piece to trace these lines out, but you could just find the midpoint of the piece and use a speed square to draw the 45 degree angles. And I grabbed about six and taped them all together. Then I took them over to the bandsaw and cut them out. This way I could undo them make, and then make new bundles of about six pieces with this template piece of sorts taped onto the front. And I started making the cleats that will attach to the door. To make these, I would first set my blade at a 45 degree angle and run my board through. Then I would turn the blade back to 90 and run it through again. And this would give me two strips that I could then chop up with the miter saw and then glue and attach to the door. To make attaching these cleats easier, I first figured out the distance I needed them apart, then cut a spacer to that size. And then it was on to the very tedious task of actually assembling the bins. I used glue and brag nails for this. And I started off by attaching the two sides to the bottom, then the front, and then the back. I would assemble a whole bunch of these and then switch out my nail length and attach a 45 degree cleat to the back to where then I would be able to go and just place them on the door. So a silly mistake, uh, especially considering I did something on that door and I compensated for it. I forgot to compensate for this uh, door jam piece. So whenever I'm trying to shut the door, this piece is running into the cleats and won't allow it to, to, to shut. So I should have set these back by half an inch. Forgot to, so now uh, I'm gonna come in with a multi-tool and just nick off half an inch on each one of these. It's not hard, it's just frustrating overlooking something so simple. It's part of it. The material I'm using, it happens to be the same depth as that trim piece. So I use that to go through and quickly mark a half an inch on all of the uh, cleats. Then I use the multi-tool to just nick off the ends. Okay, and that did it. So I did want to include at least a few of the medium sized bins that I had on my hardware caddy. I don't use this size too often, but they do come in handy for like lag bolts. They, these need to be spaced apart further, so I just cut a new spacer whenever I was placing these, these cleats on the door. So with these bigger bins, I needed to resize them so that I could fit two on one row and utilize most of the door. So I took some measurements and then just very quickly repeated the process that I did with the smaller bins to make a larger bin. And these are really handy for the bigger, bulkier items that I want to store, like my paint items or all of my accessory of hooks. And then I started loading down all of the smaller bins. So I could empty a container of hardware directly into the bins, and then I can remove the bins from the French cleat and take them around to the shop if need be. Or I can simply grab a few out 
and leave it hanging on the door. You can very easily see inside all of the bins, but I went ahead and took a pencil and marked on the outside what was inside of it. And that's it. It's a very tedious project, but a very simple one. I really like how these bins are just, you can remove them, take them around the shop, and then simply put them back. Now, I do plan on building more of these smaller ones because in my opinion, it's just the best size for that type of hardware that I store. But I ran out of uh, half inch plywood. So what I'm gonna do is wait until I have more scraps accumulated and then build some more. So what I'll do is I'll end up moving these down and then just filling up the rest of the door, I think, with these, these smaller bins. Now, I put this on the inside of a closet door, essentially, but you could also put it on the back of your shop door or even alongside of a wall. So if you do want to build some of these bins, I have a free diagram of all three sizes on my website, and I've left you a link in the description of the video. Also, if you want to build the rolling around caddy that I just got rid of, I've also linked that video in the description if you're interested. Um, shop's a little bit more organized, so of course I'm a happy camper. I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.